My name is Johnny LaFleur. I am with Methods Machine Tool and today I'd like to talk a little bit about the ease of programming on the Wilder Control, uh, the Wilder Conversational Control. We have it broken down into a couple of sections. The first one would be a manual page to where we can, if I was operating the machine, I can use hand wheels and I can do very basic functions by just defining my feed speeds, uh, do different functions like taper turning or radius turnings without attachments and positioning functions to where I can go and tell it how far I want to cut from where I'm at at a moment. Any, anything nice and easy to do I can do, that's going to just be a one-step process I could do manually. We also have a full tool database on board the machine. So I have the ability to have up to 200 tools stored, which normally anytime you run a lathe, you do not need 200 tools. But I have um, a default database that Wilder provides right now. It's still set with that. Number one would be a CNMG 432 that I can quickly and easily look at. I can see a tool graphic. I can see basic things just like in a CAD CAM system. And I have my tool nose radius there that will be compensated for during my programming. The other section that we have is the most important part of it. It's our full CNC side, which we call the cycle uh, driven control and I can do things such as cutting cycle which would be facing, turning, boring, um, all the things that we do on every part that we make. Then we have grooving opportunities, part off opportunities, thread cycles, a drilling cycle and then g-code programming that I can import in from a different source or I could create manually on the machine. I also have this ability to store work pieces to be able to use after I create this one part. Now I can use it multiple times uh, in the future and modify as needed. I'd like to show an example of the cutting cycle. I can open it up. I have one created here for an example. I named it what we would like to do, which in this instance is the rough DOD. I can move, navigate through by using my cursor and I've already got my tool number uh, established. I basically tell it how I'd like to approach my cutting and my strategy and then do I want to rough, do I want to finish, what my depth of cut is per side. Then I have my starting points where my tool will go after completion of the part, what my allowances are in X and Z, my surface footage or RPM and my feed rates that I'd like to define for roughing and finishing of the part. Then I would draw my part. In this instance, in this example, I can use, I moved and made a arc that I knew what the coordinates were for my X diameter that I'm coming to, where I want to finish in Z and what my radius is, move across. And I came off my part at two and a half inch diameter in this example. And I had came in and I added a radius in this corner. If I want to change that to a different radius after I run my first part, that's quick and easy is all I have to do. My next example that I'd like to show would be a grooving cycle. Same thing, it's still within this one workpiece. I have a tool that's in my database. In this instance, it's tool 31, which is a 125,000 wide grooving tool. I can come in and I basically just tell it where I want to cut this groove. That's the type of geometry that I'm cutting, uh, LD, ID, for instance, or a face groove uh, type of machining. And then I just go through and answer the various questions about how I would like, how much I would like on threat finishing on the base or the flanks, what my depth of cut was, what my surface footage and what my feed rate is. I also have a geometry data in this cycle, which is defining where my groove is located. In this instance, I have an X at two inches, Z is minus one and a half at the back side of my groove. I'm gonna cut down to 1.875. My base uh, width is 150 thousandths. I'm just following the image that Wilder provides me. I can actually come in here and if you notice, I have a chamfer at 10 thousandths. I have a radius at 10 thousandths in this corner, radius at 10 thousandths in this corner and another chamfer right here all within the software, not having to do any special programming technique or anything to achieve that. And that would be our grooving cycle. I'd like to show an example of a thread cutting cycle. We're in our same example workpiece. 
And within this cycle, I would name the tool that I would like to use and I'll come on and show you tool 21 in our database. And I see it here, it's threading external. So I would have that tool chosen, pick it up, run it. I tell it how I want to cut my part. So here I want to do an external thread. I want to use a constant in feed depth. Or if I want to, I can change that to a cross section where as I get deeper, I uh, get a lower depth of cut, in feed on one flank, and run through the same questions that I had uh, previously been asked when I programmed. Say I've got a four pitch thread. I can assume the pitch without having to pull my calculator out. That's an easy one, but it's easier to have it right there in the control. So how deep my thread is, how many passes I'd like to make with this thread, and my uh, RPM. Once I'm complete, I show my, I have to define where I want to cut this thread at. This instance would be a two inch diameter. It'd start off at the face of my part. And then I want to, uh, it's a straight thread. So I'd keep that at two inches. I want to go back 1.875 in Z. And I'm going to have a run in path of a quarter inch to where I dive in and lead and then cut across. And the other questions aren't pertinent to a straight thread. And that's all I have to do to create a thread cycle. Once I've completed this cycle, you bring me another piece that's been damaged or I need to repair. I can clamp on that part, indicate it in, pick up my lead by putting my tool inside of the, uh, the thread, uh, the root of my thread. And then I hit a button called find start angle. Then I teach that position and it calculates out where I'm at and it defines the helix. And at that point I can come back in and execute my cycle. And now I've picked up a thread. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about the Weiler E50 and the Weiler E Series Lays. Please feel free to reach out to one of our offices located throughout the country for more information or if you have any questions. More information can also be found at methodsmachine.com.